Wow, I feel professional. I'm having a ball. Be careful, careful, careful. Whoops, a wawa. Hi, I'm Esther. I'm a professional chef, and this is a $151 fried chicken sandwich. Hi, I'm Lorenzo. I'm a home cook, and these are my $19 fried chicken sandwich ingredients. Okay, gotta get a little creative here, but doable. <laughs> like my dog. Some familiar things. I'm not stuffing anything today, yes? So I was planning on making a hot Korean chicken sandwich with a pickled daikon slaw, kimchi animal sauce on a homemade milk bun. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. I had some organic chicken thighs, which I was planning to debone, brine, double dredge, and double fry. You're a thigh. Why are you a thigh? For my batter, I had buttermilk, rice flour, and onion and garlic powder. Plus, I had some mozzarella to torch right on top of the chicken. Am I making pizza? For frying, I had peanut oil, which I was gonna repurpose as a spicy oil for brushing, with dry Thai chili peppers, garlic and ginger, kochugaru, and sugar. For my pickled daikon slaw, I had fresh daikon radish, rainbow carrots, cucumber, and white vinegar. I had everything I needed to make my own homemade milk buns, bread flour, milk, butter, and eggs, and sesame seeds. I have no clue what's happening right now. Why do we have sesame seeds? And I was gonna top it all off with a kimchi animal sauce made from mayonnaise, ketchup, sesame oil, and some Napa cabbage kimchi. Kimchi. Good luck, Lorenzo, you're gonna need it. With Lorenzo's recipe, I have much simpler ingredients. Stuff that you're able to find in your kitchen or local grocery store. Chicken breast, soy sauce, rice vinegar, flour, eggs, mini cucumbers, green cabbage, sugar, sesame oil, mayonnaise, crushed red pepper flakes, garlic powder, and potato buns. These ingredients may be simple, but I can use my chef skills to jazz it up. If I had to guess, these ingredients would probably cost about $20? $19, see, I was close. I'm usually good with that. If I had to guess, this would all cost about $100. $151? <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait. Holy smokes, that's a lot, man. All right, I'm gonna open this book. Thank you for this wonderful list of ingredients only. So I am once again deboning chicken. This time it is thighs. So when Lorenzo is deboning the chicken, he should stay as close to the bone as possible. Make clear cut incisions so you're not losing any meat. The mozzarella cheese is throwing me off. It's like, what is the mozzarella cheese here? I need help. What? <laughs> oh, of course. Hello, uh, Rose? Rose! Lorenzo, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. I, I'm always better now hearing your voice and seeing your face. I have thighs here, which is interesting, but it has the Delicious. skin on it. Leave the skin on. It's gonna Leave be another layer on. of crunch. You're gonna have the crunchiest chicken you ever had. Put it skin side down and okay. then take a sharp knife and follow along the bone. Leave as much meat as you possibly can, and that's okay. it. For the fried chicken, it's quite interesting in the ingredients. There's mozzarella cheese. When you build your sandwich, I put a slice on the chicken. I think you should have a blowtorch. Be very careful. Torch the mozzarella really quickly. It'll crisp it up oh. and it'll be a really nice texture. It'll also melt it. You're gonna do so well. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. I appreciate every time. Let's do this. Let's burn this mozzarella. What the hell? Folks, I am gonna Fuck, 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 and debone it. I'm not that frightened. I've done wings before, if you remember. Oh, oh fudgicles. Okay, so now it's time to prep our chicken. We're gonna butterfly the chicken breast and pound it out slightly. This inspiration comes from chicken katsu. It's super crispy, it's breaded, and it's thin. And I like it because I feel like when you pound it out thin, it kind of stays moist, and it's really more about the crust. There's only one bone. She said just to cut next to it. Easy, easy. This is <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> and when you're doing this, be gentle but fierce. Think of 
someone that you're annoyed at, maybe. Think of their face being here. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Okay, that's one. That was pretty easy. Uh, lovely, lovely jubbly. So far, so good. Okay. So now our chicken's ready to go and it's ready for the brine. We are now going to use this kimchi brine. I'm a little nervous to open you up. Careful now. So originally, Lorenzo planned on using the vinegar for his slaw, but what I'm gonna do is use it for our brine. And normally I would use lemon, but since I have vinegar, that's what I'm gonna use. Starts with a cup of water, and then I'm just gonna eyeball in a tablespoon of salt and some sugar and some soy sauce. And then I have some rice vinegar and we're just gonna heat it up until everything is dissolved. As soon as you see all of the granules dissolved, it's ready. Let's just throw this in the fridge and we'll move on. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna use this brine to help marinate this chicken. I was planning on using the kimchi juice to brine the chicken. It keeps the chicken really moist and it gives it a nice spice without being too overwhelming. Wow, interesting. Brine is cooled. Now we're just gonna throw it back in the fridge and let it do its magic for about an hour. I am gonna now set this aside and I am gonna move on and use this kimchi for my animal sauce. <laughs> animal sauce. <laughs> All right, see you later. So Lorenzo was planning on making a cucumber and cabbage slaw, but I'm not gonna put it together. I'm gonna separate them because I feel like the amount of water these vegetables have are different and it can get quite wet. So I'm gonna make a quick cucumber kimchi and keep the slaw separate. Sliced kimchi. I am really like, up to here excited for this. We got kimchi going on every which way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna salt and vinegar the cucumber and let it sit. Salt will draw out some of the moisture from the cucumber to retain its like crunchiness and the vinegar will quickly pickle it. This is like a quick version of kimchi where you don't have to let it ferment. I don't think I need that much. Um, I'm gonna start off with this. Let's uh, slice it up a bit. All right, so next, let's go ahead and put these beautiful, Beautiful, caramelized onions. I actually want more. I like caramelized onions. Dijon mustard and ketchup. So let's dive into it. This looks perfect. If we go too thin, then it won't retain texture. But if we go too thick, it won't pickle enough. So it has to be the right size. So we'll take some salt and vinegar. We'll just let that sit and do its thing. I also have my sugar. A little salt, always. Doosh. Pepper, ooh, I love pepper. And sesame seed sauce. Let's mix her on up. Wow, that looks like something you would put on a sandwich. So it's been about 20 minutes. The cucumbers are still a little wet and I want it to be as dry as possible. This can go into some Greek yogurt or you could just drink it. It's good for your skin. Drum roll, please. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mmm. It's spicy, but it's not hot. It's interesting, it's not, oh, well, I'm wrong. Just a splash of soy sauce, sesame oil, and garlic powder. Garlic obviously being a very traditional ingredient in kimchi. Crushed red pepper, it gives it heat. Kind of smells like kimchi already. Mmm, oh my God. I'm actually like shocked at how good this turned out. It actually tastes like cucumber kimchi that I would make at my restaurant. Okay, now moving on. We're ready to make some slaw, daikon slaw, which is really cool. It's basically a radish. All right, so cabbage. This is a great option for a fried chicken sandwich. When you eat katsu, it always comes with this like nice paper thin slaw on the side and I love that. And we're gonna kind of mimic that. We got our mandolin and Lorenzo is also gonna be using the mandolin as well. Hope he doesn't slice his finger though. Be really careful. The rumor is true. I have never used this little contraption. That's why I need to protect myself with a, woo! <laughs> I've lost it. It's so uniform and consistent in size because it's all about texture, really. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and make the sauce. Okay, we have about a half a cup of water. <laughs> Hi, you guys, are you having fun? I'm having a ball. Vinegar. I'm gonna throw in some sugs, a little salt, and I am going to let this heat up. Let me just cut this just like this. See, does this, is it even gonna fit in there? 
I've never used this. Oh, wow. Can you see this? Ooh, this is really interesting. I'm very glad I have the uh, glove though. This is gonna be a soy aioli. And the inspiration behind this is kind of like a Korean barbecue sauce mixed with the soy sauce. Starting with some soy sauce, some sugar, some garlic powder. We'll do a pinch of salt, some pepper, sesame oil, just a tiny bit. And we'll whisk this first. So as you can see guys, my sugar and my salt have dissolved in the liquid. Uh, so I'm just gonna turn it off and allow this to cool. I like letting it cool so that it doesn't cook the vegetables too much and it still retains a nice texture. All right, so how nice we got two different colored carrots. Looks like our sugar and salt are all dissolved in here and that's when I'll add my mayo. That was not me. I swear. One thing about this slaw is we're gonna dress it very last minute, right before assembling our sandwich. I want the slaw to stay nice and crunchy and crispy and not wet. And what happens is the salt from the sauce will draw out the moisture in the cabbage and just become like very, very wet. So we'll set this aside for now. So my beautiful pickling liquid has cooled down. So let's just pour it in. We're just gonna mix it and toss. Look how pretty that is. I think we are good to go. All right, so Lorenzo sent me some potato rolls and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually make my own breadcrumbs for the chicken. I love doing this because you can kind of control the consistency of the breadcrumb and I like breadcrumbs that are kind of like chunky. I am now going to basically take a stab at making these milk buns. These milk buns are super special because they're light and fluffy and it uses this tang zong, which is the starter, makes sure you cool it completely before using it. What okay. you're going to do first is take flour and water and cook it until it's thickened and it's gonna have a consistency almost like a pudding. You're going to proof your yeast. So you're sure. gonna put the okay. yeast and a little bit of sugar and it's gonna start to bubble. And then you're going to combine those two things and the other ingredients. And you're gonna mix them in, if you have a standing mixer, that'll be fantastic. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna increase it before I add the butter. I'm gonna try to not to get hooked. Am I doing it right so far? Anyone? Okay, it looks like it's incorporating. I think it looks good. And we're gonna put that right in. There you go. I'm gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and just let it rest and rise for an hour or two. We're just gonna take half of these guys and throw it in our food processor. Pulse it. And I definitely want to dehydrate these buns. We don't want it to be so moist when sticking on the chicken, but we don't want any color. So we're gonna do it at a low heat at 300 degrees. And we'll check it like every two minutes. Wow, look at this dough. The yeast has done its work. It has risen. And let's get you out. Wow, look how nice and airy that is. So nice. Let's uh, cut you in half. And I'm gonna just cut you another half. Okay. That is one. So it's been about five, six minutes. Let's go check on our breadcrumbs. When you hear that, it means it's dry. We'll let it sit and cool before we coat our chicken. Oh my goodness. Ba-bam! We have now a beautiful array of dough. It's gonna set one more time. It's supposed to rise. So these guys are gonna be set aside and we'll move on. So now we're just gonna toast our bun. minutes. Just make sure you're kind of moving it around so it gets evenly toasted. The buns are back. How cute are these little baby buns? They look terrific and they're not even cooked yet. <laughs> Here we go. We get to rain some beautiful sesame seeds. Wow. That is cute, cute, patoot. Look at that. Come on now. We are ready to go in the oven, folks. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna also toast the other side. That looks good. Perfect. Buns are toasted and ready to go. Okie dokie, ding, ding, dingy. Looky what I've got here, folks. They look great. Milk buns. I did that. Very impressive, thank you. <laughs> Let's get the chicken going. All 
Our chicken has been sitting in the brine for about an hour and it's ready to go now. And we're just gonna dredge it by using some flour, egg wash, and our breadcrumbs that we made earlier. The first thing is some flour. And we're just gonna season salt, pepper. Okay, now our eggs. Season this as well. There we go. So, we got our chicken, flour, egg wash, breadcrumbs, landing tray. It's nice to be very organized in the kitchen. I've got two types of flour, so maybe even Steven kind of thing. Adding cornstarch, it helps crisp it up. Powdered garlic candy, this is great. I use a lot, let's, don't look. <laughs> Kosher salt and onion powder. Second portion of the stations is gonna be buttermilk. So Lorenzo is gonna be double dredging this chicken. And what that means is you're dipping it in the buttermilk, then flour, then buttermilk again, and then flour, because we want a really nice, crispy crust. Oh, Esther, you crazy. <laughs> Esther, looking forward to meeting with you. I apologize ahead of time. My rule of thumb here is always one hand wet and one hand dry. And we want to make sure that you get as much breadcrumbs on the chicken as possible. Okay. Perfect. Looks really good. And we're ready to go. I'm so excited, can't wait to fry these up. Now it's time to fry our chicken. My oil's at 350, so we'll start with just two. I don't want to overcrowd our pot because it'll change the temperature of the oil. This will fry for about five to six minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not getting too hot. So we're just gonna fry this for, I don't know, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, something like that. Not too, too concerned because this is only the first fry. Let it do its thing. When you're frying, you really wanna just like leave it alone. People love to just like fool around with your food when it's cooking, but my rule of thumb is like, let it do its thing. Doing nothing is doing everything. Okay, here we go. Drip, drip, drip. I'm gonna let you settle on a baking rack. You'll know it's done when the chicken stays firm. And right now, if you feel it, it's still like very flimsy. That means it's not cooked yet. Since we have a enormous vat of frying oil, we are not gonna put it to waste. We are gonna put it to work. Lorenzo will be frying the chicken in peanut oil and we'll be using that oil to repurpose it and make a spicy chili oil that will brush on top of the chicken. You're basically frying the chicken all over again with a hot chili oil. So I am going to ladle in one, two, and why not three? Korean chili flakes, ooh, cayenne pepper, paprika. Oh, I love ginger, I'm telling you what. And of course, garlic. We've got sugar and I'm gonna use all this. Wow, that's a lot of black peppercorns, but I love black peppercorns. As for you, I guess I'm not even cutting you up. I am just gonna put Thai chili flakes in that oil. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Wow, what a beautiful color that is. All right, I'm gonna move on and refry my chicken second time. My smaller piece is about done, and you can tell when it's kind of like floating on the top. And away we go, folks. Here we go. This is just gonna be a couple minutes also. Oh my goodness. Very exciting, very exciting. Patience is really the key to cooking. I'm actually not patient at all, but I guess when it comes to cooking, I know that patience is very important, so I will for the food. There you go, guys. Let's take it out. Talk about crispy fried. Beautiful. It looks so good. Yum. All right, these are ready. Here is our beautifully fried chicken, and we are ready to assemble. Looks awesome. These guys are ready to be brushed by this amazing, amazing repurposed oil. We'll be right back. Why I just said that, I don't know. So, first things first. I like my buns toasted. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and away we go. I love this. I love it. I want to do this again. Wow, okay. We're just gonna use half of this. Just gonna lightly toss the sauce. Okay, that looks great. This soy aioli we made, we're actually gonna spread it on our bun as well. Okay, the best part ever. So grab our chicken. 
I love that. Oh my gosh. I mean, come on. Needs some cheese, doesn't it? One, two. Hmm. That cheese just doesn't look so appetizing, but it will. <laughs> come on. Yes. <laughs> I am a bad scientist. Let's get close. And then slaw. Cucumber kimchi. That looks crazy. <laughs> oh my god. That is a fried chicken sandwich. And here's my take on Lorenzo's fried chicken sandwich. I give you the most beautiful double fried milk bun sandwich. Let's do it. I know I made it, but that looks good. It looks a little bit intimidating. <laughs> I should have thought of that when I was assembling the sandwich. Oh my God. Mmm, it is so, so moist. The slaw is perfection. The sauce, oh my gosh. And then the slight pickly notes of the cucumber kimchi. Oh my gosh, it's like so amazing. Mm. I think I'm just gonna have to eat this whole sandwich. It looks absolutely delicious. Wow. Boom, boom, boom. The crispy marinated chicken. Mmm, it's that kimchi animal sauce. It's like a treat. And then you get this fresh, lovely slaw. Oh my God. It is fantastic. Esther, wherever you are, my taste buds thank you. <laughs> I'm out. Hello, Esther, come on over. Oh my gosh, I, how was it? It was. <laughs> I honestly, I was very worried. You should have been, and okay. you were correct to be. <laughs> it was an adventure. What I was really worried about was the milk bun. How'd you do? Well, I was hoping I could just buy one. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in my world. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I've never made bread before. I mean, it looks really pretty and perfect, actually. Thank you. There is like a secret something in this chicken. It's the kimchi brine? I'm telling you. It, I, it's it magic. Is. That is delicious. All around fantastic. My hat is off to I mean, you. I'm, I was very scared for you, but you did it. <laughs>